afternoon guys. This is Doc, DocsDetecting.com. Uh, today I'm going to take those three specimens that I found uh, the other day and uh, the uh, YouTube videos are up. There are uh, three species and uh, I'm going to do a specific gravity test on it. I can't take credit for the methodology here. There's somebody else on the internet that was kind enough to show how he did it. I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, I thought I would uh, see how it works with these three uh, widely disseminated gold specimens. So first thing you have to do is you have to uh, record the dry measure. Now I've got these in the order that they were found. So the first one, the dry measure is 1.63 grams. Uh, the second piece is uh, uh, 4.8 grams. And uh, I think I found out before that uh, this thing really doesn't get close up. And the third measurement, uh, or the third weight, dry weight, of the uh, specimen is 13.5 grams. That was a pretty good chunk. That's one that really sort of screamed. I think the reason is because there's a, there's a chunk of gold right there. And so, but I'd like to see uh, of those weights how much of it is gold. So um, what the gentleman on the internet did, and it was pretty, pretty... Uh, cool is uh, instead of using a triple beam scale which are relatively expensive he just used these digital scale and uh, took a two by four and he said then take a little piece of wood like this and put a little uh, key ring on the bottom of it all right and you're gonna set that right on top of your scale and uh, you want to take like a little picture hanging hook on a piece of string and uh, get it get your string wet so you don't end up screwing up your measurement um, because what you need to do is you need to suspend the string and the uh, the specimen in the water to get a wet weight of the specimen so you need a dry weight and you need a wet weight a specific gravity okay and it needs to for some reason my son was asked me this he said why in the world would you have to suspend it why couldn't you just put the the bottle of water you know, with the gold sitting in the bottom of it on your scale, you know, zero it out and then put the specimen. I said, I'm not sure, um, unless it's a, uh, unless it could be an issue with having a scale that doesn't, you know, that won't weigh and won't zero the, uh, won't zero the, uh, uh, the uh, water out, the bottle of water. Okay, so anyway, um, let me set this down here for a second, and we're going to take. I'm going to do a real quick measurement here to see how much string I need for it to be actually suspended in water. Okay, so about there. All right, so we're going to take the specimen, and we'll take this first one, and uh, I'm going to tie the string around it. And uh, I don't have to get too fancy, just enough to, and like I said uh, I weighed all the string, or I uh, didn't weigh it, but uh, oh, you know what? I'm so goofy. Um, I, I, got a real important step and that important step is to get the string and the little cross beam okay there like this all right so here's your setup and you got the string in the water now you want to this is a really important step before you tie the the uh, specimen to the string is you want to turn your scale on and turning the scale on now, it's it sort of uh, almost zeroed it out, okay? But we're going to hit the tear. It's just a little light breeze today, which is unfortunate because it's going to make it jump around a bit. Um, you know the scientific scales? I mean, they they weigh them. There we go. That's about as close as we're going to get it. Uh, the scientific scales they use those and they. Uh, they actually are inside of a case, so nothing disturbs the uh, nothing disturbs the wane, uh, the slight wind. Okay, so take this string and uh, use my extensive Boy Scout training to uh, tie it. I think I made it through my my first badge in Boy Scouts, and uh, I don't know what the I. I love the camping and everything, but I actually think it was a matter of I don't think my parents could afford the dues. Um, so okay, so here we go. We got it suspended, and we're going to take that and put it in the water. Okay, so let's take a look. So 
So there you go. You see that it's not touching the bottom. It's actually suspended. And it's, wait till it settles down a little. Get out of there. My little dog's going to help. Bailey. Get out of there, Bailey. He's trying to steal the show. Okay, I love that thing. Wait for the, the wind is blowing the string. Wait till it settles down. Looks like, okay, Maddie, I don't need your help either, jeepers. Okay, I'm going to call it, looks like when it wasn't blowing, it was 4.5. Let me turn this over. Oh, you know what? It dropped. It dropped all the way to the bottom. So that's uh, not good. Uh, well, it dropped all the way to the bottom. Of course it dropped all the way to the bottom because I, I, un, uh, I untwisted the rope. So that's one of the ways you can bring this up and make sure it is truly suspended and not touching the sides is just roll your bar and take up a little string. So as you can see, that is perfectly suspended in water now. I'm going to call it 4.6. It was quiet there just for a moment. So that uh, first piece the wet weight 4.6. All right. So we'll get that out. Nice thing about this is really not very complicated to do it this way. Um, the second piece, which seems to have a lot more gold in it, I mean, just by by visual looking, it looks like it's got a lot of gold. There you go. Hanging and make sure we get all the string in the water. Keep everything as consistent as possible. All right. So here we go. And get that piece get suspended. Oh, it's not touching the sides, and it's real quiet right now, and it's 3.8. It's not even bouncing around at all, so we'll record that. 3.8 is the uh, wet weight, and 4.8 was the dry weight. And here's the big chunk. So we'll get that tied up. Easy to tie because it's long. Now we're gonna I'm gonna see something here in a minute, just out of curiosity. Um, all right. So wind stopped blowing right now. Just 10.2. Not even bouncing around. There you go. See it sitting there in the water. So, 10.2. Okay, 10.2 out of 13.5. Now, being that we have those gram measurements, all we have to do now is plug it into an equation. And uh, uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll go back into the house. Now, let's see if I may, maybe can do it in a spreadsheet where I can just uh, pop those numbers in and it'll give us the, uh, the approximate gram of the gold inside of the quartz. So that's, uh, I'll be back in a second as soon as I uh, get in there. All right, so Doc, Thanks. I'm back. Before I go and do those calculations, I just uh, I reminded myself that I wanted to test uh, a theory, um, or not a theory, I guess, just a, uh, the reason why you would suspend this in water. Because I, like I said, I don't know, quite know the answer, whether it makes a difference to suspend it and actually get a suspended weight in water, or, um, whether it's just the fact that some scales won't, uh, you know, or don't have a large enough capacity. Now, this is a 600 gram capacity scale, and uh, so I'm going to put the water on there first. Oh, well, just just made it. It's like 552 grams, 553, and I'm going to tear it out. Okay, so we're at zero. This is that big specimen. 
Okay, I'm going to put that in there and see if it makes a difference um, just to weigh the thing in water as opposed to suspended water. I'm going to slide it down there because I don't want it to ah, shoot and drip some water, so it'll cost some weight a bit. Yeah, I did. I lost 1.7 grams. Let me tear it again. Okay. Um, I want to slide it down there because I don't want this thing. It's sort of delicate. I don't want it to break. All right, let's see what it weighs. Well, it weighs about... Yeah, see, it makes a difference. Wow. Um, it weighs... 14.2 or so um, in the jar, but suspended, it only weighs 10.2 grams. Um, so that's sort of strange. I, I that it weighs. Uh, you because you would think, oh well, you know, just uh, why wouldn't it weigh the same in water as opposed to suspended in water? But apparently, it weighs different, and so you've got to actually suspend it in water. Ah, I feel like Mr. Wizard. You guys probably, some of you aren't old enough probably to remember Mr. Wizard, but, uh, or who's the new guy? Bill Nye, the science guy, something like that. All right, I'll be back in a second when I uh, get the hey guys, calculations. Doc, I'm back with the uh, calculations. I did this in a spreadsheet because it makes it so much easier to uh, just punch in two numbers, your dry weight and your wet weight. It's going to do all the calculations for you instead of getting your... Uh, calculator out and a pad and a paper and uh, you know making all the mistakes so it's probably going to be a little hard to see I did the first specimen the one where the dry weight was 6.3 grams and the wet weight was 4.76 uh, and let me explain to you how this works okay now hopefully you can see that okay so you see we've got the dry weight of 6.3 grams wet weight of 4.6 grams Okay, and now what we do is we take the difference between those two. You subtract one from the other. So you subtract the wet weight from the dry weight. That gives you 1.7 is the difference in grams. Okay, then to figure out your specific gravity of the specimen, you take the uh, dry weight, which is 6.3, and you divide it by the difference, that 1.7. And that gives you that 3.705 on out, okay? Then you take the known specific gravity of quartz, which is 2.63, and you subtract that from that 3.7. That's right to the left of it. All right, the next thing is, is now you take the specific gravity of gold, okay, which is that uh, 1.07, and you times it by the difference of 1.7, that gives you 1.829. All right, now you take that 1.829 and you times it uh, times a constant number. It never changes, which is 25.97. I'm, I'm not actually sure what that number is. Um, um, I'm sure somebody on here can tell you what it is, and I could look it up and find out. Uh, then the next thing is just what, what that is, is it's giving you the... the uh, ounces of gold in that specimen so there's 0.07 ounces and then the next one is just converting the ounces back into grams so it tells you here at the end that that specimen that weighed that first one that weighed 6.3 grams has 2.19 grams of gold in it okay so just by doing this little spreadsheet anybody that wants a spreadsheet if you have excel uh, send me a pm and I'll send you the equations for it. I'll just send you the little uh, Excel file and you can just bring it up and punch in your numbers yourself. Um, so I'm gonna stop the video right now. I'll put the other two numbers in and we'll uh, come up with, uh, with those. Well, I don't know, maybe I can do it right here. Okay, so the second specimen, uh, the one I found in the second, it, uh, the dry weight was 4.8 grams and the uh, wet weight was 3.8 grams. Okay. All right, so just that fast, it figures it out, all right, uh, without having to do any of the messing around. So you got 4.8 grams, 3.8 grams is the wet weight, and you come down here, and that specimen has 2.59 grams of gold in it. All right, so we'll go back to the, the third and the largest piece, which was 13.5, which I think has the most gold in it, I think, by percentage, just by visually looking at it. And the, the wet weight was 
10.2 grams. And that says there is, in that particular specimen, 5.77 grams. 5.7 grams of that is gold, and the rest is quartz. All right, so that's how we did it. And uh, uh, more than happy to have anybody check my calculations. I'm uh, not a math genius by any stretch of the imagination. All right, take care. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'm back. Uh, I just had another thought before I close this video out on figuring the specific gravity of a uh, gold specimen. Um, based on these calculations, these are the kind of calculations that the old timers would use when they would um, take and do a sampling of ore to figure out whether or not it would be worthwhile for them to go in a particular direction in a vein or uh, hard rock mining. And so if we were to take a look at just um, that second specimen, the one that weighed uh, 4.8 grams, okay, and we know of that 4.8 gram specimen, 2.59 of that uh, specimen is gold. So what we do is we figure out the percentage. So in other words, uh, we know that if the dry weight 4.8, if, uh, if the, uh, the specific gravity ended up showing us that there was 2.4 grams of gold, well, we'd say, hey, 50% of that particular specimen was gold. So the specimen that weighs 4.8 uh, grams would yield uh, 2.4 grams of gold. But in this instance, it was just a little bit more than that. So it, the percentage is actually 54%. So 54% of that particular specimen was gold. Now, if we wanted to figure out whether or not it would be profitable to mine that, we would take a look at the uh, number of grams in a ton. Well, there's 29,166 grams to a ton. So you take that 29,166, you times it by the 54%, because we know that 54% of that material will be gold. Okay, at least based on this particular sample. All right, so that would give you 15,790.82 grams of that 29,166 grams, that ton, would be gold. And if we then convert that back to ounces, we know that for every ton of material, okay, 2,000 pounds worth of material, we would be getting 507 ounces of gold. So that's uh, pretty impressive. Um, that you would get that that much gold, but basically, I mean, it's it, the the important thing is right there that 54 percent, 54 percent of that quality ore uh, would be gold. So it would be a no-brainer that yeah, you would definitely want to mine that. That's really, really extremely high grade. You'd be rich in a few days uh, running that kind of material. Okay, I thought that might be interesting to you. It's sort of interesting to me. So I uh, hope this was educational to some degree. Uh, it was for me. I learned a lot just doing it. Take care, guys. Be careful out there. It's a lot of fun, but you know when we get carried away and uh, uh, the adrenaline gets going, sometimes we're not as cautious as we should be. Bye.